when we talk about DSM-4, there's been a lot of controversy, a lot of discussion about these criteria. And I want to point out a couple things to you. First, we got the A1 and A2 issue. A1 is referring to an objective uh, qualifier for a traumatic event. A2 refers to the subjective experience of fear, helplessness, or horror in response to that traumatic event. Now, I want you to be aware that there's a couple things here that are really key. A, we have the idea of being confronted with that information. It doesn't require that you are physically confronted or that you are physically in danger. If you learned about this information, as it happened to a friend or family member, there are lots of ways to be confronted with this information that don't revolve, involve direct exposure. It also refers to a threat to the physical integrity. Now, we believe that was designed to include individuals who have, uh, say, sexual abuse or sexual violence where they are physically safe, but they have long-term psychological consequences as a result. The other thing we want to talk about here is this idea of intense fear, helplessness, or horror. Based on what we know about military members, do they generally report intense fear, helplessness, or horror in response to their trauma exposure or in response to combat? No. No. What do they say in session? <clears throat> I was just doing my job. I was just doing my job. That's what I was there to do. Let's look further at the symptom cluster that we need for diagnosis for PTSD. We need one, two, three. So we need one of the re-experiencing symptoms. We need three of the avoidance symptoms. And we need two of the arousal symptoms in order to be diagnosed with PTSD. This is the symptom we've been dealing with. These are the uh, diagnostic criteria we've been using for quite some time. And the key here is that we want to be aware of a couple of important things. One is that in order to be diagnosed with PTSD, that relationship to the stressor is important. If someone has the symptoms of PTSD without that traumatic stressor, it does not meet full diagnostic criteria. We want to also be aware of, again, the symptom families, a duration of more than 30 days, and we want to have that significant functional impairment or distress associated with those symptoms that are co-occurring for 30 days or more. Let's take a peek ahead to DSM-5, which should be out any minute now. There's some significant changes here for the criterion A in DSM-5. One being, we've changed our perspective of what trauma is, and the taken out that subjective piece of A2 criteria. So here we have the person was exposed to one or more of the following events, actual death or threatened death, actual or threatened serious injury, or actual or threatened sexual violation, that's new language, and one or more ways. Either A, experiencing that them himself, two, witnessing in person the event as they occurred to others, three, learning the event occurred to a close family member or relative, and the actual or threatened death must be violent or accidental. And then four, experiencing repeated or extreme exposure to aversive details of the event. Now note here that this includes a lot more individuals who were not included in the first uh, DSM-4 definition, and it also will include, um, it also applies to a lot of service members who may have, let's say, some difficult um, positions. So, can you think of some service members that would be impacted by this new definition who would not have been impacted before, would not have met criterion before? Yeah. 